She's gonna run all the way around the other side for me. Oh, she might go in. Well, that's... Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this final part in a series of seven videos where we've uh, put together our Lily Robot milking system. Keep watching and I'll take you for a tour around the building. The final part of the build was now underway. We just had to finish the last section of the building off. We started by laying the concrete passageways first, just matching up to what we'd done earlier. We did create a sump. This is, was made for the robot automatic scraper, which will come at a later date. The concrete went well, just as normal, just laying the walkways or the passageways first, and then we started to prepare them for the cubicles or the uh, cow stalls, putting in the posts on the right position, quite accurately measured. As the building took shape from the inside, we also started to lay some concrete on the outside. This would be the yard or the uh, front area of the feed passage or the feed way where the cows will eat, as you can see on the photo. We did it piece by piece. Collinson sent their feed alerts. We fitted these to the corn towers. These indicate how much corn or feed is actually in the silos at any time, mobile app, all the modern works as you might say. We carried on laying on fitting the cubicles down the uh, down the rest of the building. We decided to go with these fix which I mentioned earlier. Slightly different design from the first section, they changed the design. We're now on round posts instead of square posts. I completed and finished and made my own little gate for the actual place where the, the robot scraper will go to later date. Simon loved laying concrete, always got his shirt off and got into it. Dad always stood there watching to make sure we were doing a good job. All went well. We reinforced the concrete which ran over the top of the slurry tank. This was to make sure it didn't crack at a later date. Uh, it also gives a nice solid finish for the cows to lay on. So it's actually the tank is actually crossed over with concrete solidly on top. Panels went in on the inside, dividing all the areas up. And then all we finally finished putting all the easy fix cubicles in. We absolutely love these uh, cubicles. They're really comfortable for the cows and it was all about cow comfort. They have plenty of air and plenty of ventilation in the building. Though, Although after using the building now for a little while, hot summers seem to be a little bit of a problem. Um, we may have to put fans in at a later date. We carried on finishing off the passageways, the feed passageways outside. This worked out really quite well in preparation for the actual feed rails that go on the front. We do like these as well. Um, they stop the cows rubbing the necks and also you get no rub marks on, on, on the shoulders or anywhere. They're very comfortable for the cows to feed from. Finally, the internal of the building was now complete. We just needed to add cows. Stay with us and I'll uh, take you on a guided tour around the building. Okay, as promised, let's go and have a look around the uh, new robot building. Well, say new. It's been running now for a couple of years. Uh, all cows are in, everything's settled down. If you watch our series of videos on the uh, photos, uh, we didn't have a video camera at the time, so photos uh, was the only way of sort of describing it. But uh, let me go show you around. Come on. Okay, we decided to go for easy fix cubicles. Extremely comfortable for the cows, as you can see. They absolutely love laying down in them. Um, these are what they call cow guides. Helps to stop the cows laying in backwards and also keeps them nice and straight so they lay as straight as possible. But as you can see, Daisy's laid down here. She's got her back against the rail. There's no rub marks on the cows at all. Makes them extremely comfortable. Everything was thought about. We tried to go for cow welfare, cow comfort, and everything was designed around the building towards the cow. They do like standing in the rubber mats. Uh, we don't have rubber on the actual concrete walkways. We didn't feel that this was necessary, but uh, some say it's uh, quite beneficial. Better on the feet. But uh, so far we don't have any problems. But the cows are really comfortable. The Jupiter mattresses have got uh, quite thick. The built-in built -in brisket board. As you can see, okay, that's all built into the rubber. It keeps the cows nice and straight. Stops them laying too far. As you can 
see from uh, 406 there, she's laid nice and comfortable, quite content, chewing a cud, enjoying life. Each cubicle is fitted with a scratch pad, so she can uh, go in and have a little bit of a scratch if she likes. They do stand there and enjoy scratching the chins. So nice wide passageways, as you can see. Plenty of room for the cows to walk up and down. And then halfway down the uh, down the building, we created a crossover, so they could cross from one side to the other. And then moving forward, this is the second slurry tank we built. As described earlier in this uh, video, the tank stretches from one side of the building all the way across to the other on the outside. It's empty from the outside, so we don't actually have to come in with the cows. We lay double concrete over the top of the uh, top of the tank, give it its strength. As you can see, the cows are actually laid on the top of the tank, and they're actually no wiser, no wiser to where they're actually laid. But all very, very comfortable, and it keeps them extremely clean too. There are a total of 110 cubicles in the building. Uh, we can house 110 cows if possible. You never get uh, all cows laying down and, uh, at the same time. You've usually got, with the robot system, there's always a percentage feeding, percentage laying down, and a percentage just, just mulling around as cows do. But as you can see, I'm in the building. I am on my own. It's very quiet today. But, and they've had all the breakfast. So as you can see, they're all... Uh, Extremely comfortable, extremely quiet, and very, very content. To foot bath the cows, we just use two plastic troughs. The cow just, after milking, walks through the uh, foot baths. Simple and straightforward. We are hoping to put automatic foot baths in at a later date. Cows need clean water constantly, so we decided to go with the uh, JFC tip over water troughs. These are a fantastic piece of kit. There are stainless steel ones on the market which are equally as good, but uh, for convenience J J JFC were available and we went for three troughs in the, in, in the building itself. There's one here, there's one at the uh, far end and one in the centre. One near the robots, the first thing the cow does when she leaves the robot just come and have a drink of water. We do it every single time. Having a mouthful of dry corn or dry cake, first thing they do is, I need a drink of water. It's a bit like us having a chocolate biscuit, and you think they always go well with a cup of tea. Okay, easily cleaned out. Just tilt it up. Twist them over. Job done. Then Vogue feed fence is also very comfortable for the cow. As you can see, there's no rub marks on the cow. She's no neck rail to fight with. And they, uh, they tend to eat more naturally. Head down, as she is doing. Takes a mouthful and then she'll lift her head straight up and stand there, chewing away. More natural grazing. We'll go down and munch silage. Then she'll lift her head up, as you can see, and stand nice and straight. We don't get any rub marks on the back, the neck or the shoulders extremely comfortable and also allows them to be very sociable too best friends we've still quite a lot of work to do on the outside of the building tidying up final bits of concrete but uh, the system is actually up and running and working and we're very very pleased with it at the moment at the end of the building, the furthest away from the robots, we uh, put two entrances in. Obviously you can drive straight down each passageway if we ever need to get in for any reason. All open building, plenty of ventilation all the way around, though it does get a little bit warm in summer. The reason we went for the Lily robots was, uh, I think mainly because of service backup. Uh, they're quite local to us, uh, the engineers if we need them generally come out and they're usually here within within an hour on an emergency 
or an emergency breakdown, they usually uh, fairly quickly. All the guys are very good. Uh, they all know the job, very proficient in what they do. They seem to know the robots inside and out. Any spare parts we need, we just call the office and they usually come, come within a couple of days. The machines are very strong. They do take a lot of stick, especially when you get some young heifers. Uh, but the cow stacked to them very well, very comfortable. But we did design the building around the robots. Because it's not just the robots in a robotic system. It's the whole building as part of the robot as well. So if anybody thinking of going into robot milking, your building needs to be adequate for the, for the job. Uh, don't just think about the robot. Think of the whole thing, the whole project. Because the robots are just part of it. It's the whole building, the whole system, cow comfort, freedom, movement, fresh air, ventilation obviously, fresh air and ventilation, everything to do with the cow. So think of the cow first, think what she'd want and then build it from there. That is your starting point. Cows become a lot quieter, you get used to your being around them a lot more and every cow becomes a favourite. Start your dear. In the robot room, we try to make it so we can keep it as clean as possible. We put um, what they call dairy coat on the walls. Uh, the blue you can see, it's like a, a resin mixture. Uh, it seals the concrete blocks up and it's easily washable. Any fresh calf cows, the milk's taken from the cow, doesn't go into the milk system or the bulk tank, which actually goes down and into the milk for use buckets. And then we can either tip it away or we can use it to feed the calf. We change the milk filter twice a day, as you would do on a conventional parlour. So we can handle the cows, especially if we get uh, cows that need a service or AI in. That's not artificial intelligence, by the way, that's artificially inseminated. Or we're segregating a cow out for the bull. Or also we have uh, at the rear, of the rear of the robots a pen, which is for mainly pooler cows and anybody who's needing treating. Or just needs to go on straw generally. Robot will automatically segregate them out. Well, let's get swings around for us. There we go. Come on then. There's a two way gate on each robot, and we just program into the robot, and what it does, it diverts the cow into the back. So we'll walk through. And she comes through here, non return gate again, goes through the non return gate and the cows come and they can actually lay comfortable at the back. We've got uh, one springing heifer in here, one lame cow which is going to go in treatment and a freshly calved cow. If we need to serve a cow for AI in or any other treatments we can actually swing the, the gate around and she walks around here into the uh, yoke at the back. Then we can hold her, treat her, let her go either into the pen to rest or back in with the milk herd. If you're just building a robot system I would suggest a holding pen or a separation pen at the rear or the side, whichever suits your system. But uh, it does work extremely well and uh, I don't think we, we would be without it. The only thing I would have done with ours, probably made it a little bit bigger and possibly put a few cubicles in as well as a strawed area for resting. So the cows in the treatment area of the holding pen come from the back into this small holding area and round and then we can let them go through this uh, push gate. That way they don't get mixed up with the others. They get milked, milked in the robot and then they'll be segregated back into the uh, pen at the rear or the uh, rest pen. Fitted a rail so the cows can come and let themselves into the robot from either side. Stops them getting mixed up. Because our building's long and narrow with just two double rows, we decided to put the upper office up on top it's well out of the way and it gives us a nice bird's eye view of the cows as a whole. So we can see the whole building from here. Anybody who's not doing what they're supposed to be doing or any problems, we can soon sort them out. So we can see the straw area back of the robots. Extremely useful pen once again. Any cows calving, we can keep an eye on them. Hope you've enjoyed the tour around the building. Hopefully it gives you some ideas if you're thinking of going into uh, robotic milking. I highly recommend it. Cow health improved tremendously. Just everything about it, it's, it's just all been for the cow. 
we've enjoyed the challenge from uh, from day one it's taken us a little while to get there it's been like a five-year project from start to finish with both robots in and milking now we're extremely happy with the whole thing uh, would we go back no back to conventional power no no way everything's better for the cow they're more comfortable they're extremely well managed the cows speak for themselves milk increases butter fat's good all the cows are extremely happy in the building and if you've got happy cows we've got good quality milk and that's what it's all about sadly we didn't have the camera in the beginning so it was all photos but now we've walked around the building i hope you've enjoyed it hope it's giving you some ideas if you're thinking of going into this sort of system for us it's been the right move we've thoroughly enjoyed it from start to finish it's been a large project a few ups and downs along the way but we got there in the end if you have any questions leave them in the comments below hit that subscribe button to be notified of new videos every week and we'll keep you updated see you in the next one driver's finished collecting the milk it puts the tank into wash operation once this is finished the milk is diverted from the buffer tank back into the bulk tank next time the robots wash out the buffer tanks washed clean ready for next time the milk comes up underground through the pipe cooler which chills it down to about 18 degrees straight away and then the bulk tank does the rest